What were Mr. Ewing's personality traits and how were they manifested through his childhood experiences? How did this all lead to his horrific offences? Well, I would identify paranoia as one massive missing piece of the puzzle. He said that others were trying to control him. He always tried to assess the power dynamic of any relationship. And that would be from his wife to work colleagues, to prison guards, to even myself as his psychiatrist. His thought in entering any kind of dynamic or relationship was, what do they want from me? And this was sparked by his overwhelming sense of abandonment and abuse. Firstly, being abandoned by his biological mother, then being ignored by his foster father, then being physically chastised by his foster mother, and then being sexually abused by his teacher. Mr. Ewing resisted this sense of being controlled by fighting back against the people he perceived to be mistreating him or abusing him. This would show when he had an argument with prisoners even though it would lead to a battering and I think it's really relevant to this offence. So he felt that his wife was abandoning him, he felt that his wife was provoking him. Now just to be crystal clear, I'm not excusing his behaviour his reaction obviously was inexcusable. And I'm not saying that his wife did anything wrong. I'm just describing the perception, his perception and his paranoid perspective. Because as the great philosopher Socrates once said, make sure you have toilet paper before you shit on my nose. Another huge relevant factor is Mr. Ewing's disconnection and detachment to other people. So why was Mr. Ewing's disconnection and detachment to other people relevant in this case? Well, it's not only about his own functioning and socialising. I mean, he didn't really have any hobbies or friends, uh, but it would also make him more isolated and marginalised. And crucially, from my point of view, it made it harder to convince him to engage in therapy. And this, I think, was learnt behaviour. He'd learned to cut himself off from a young age to avoid his foster parents, one of whom, as I said, would physically chastise him with a belt and the other would ignore him. And this, I think, was reflected in his relationship with his wife when they became emotionally distant very quickly. It's also kind of reflected, I think, with him not mingling with his peers in prison and on the psychiatric ward. But I'm glad to say that with some therapy, Mr. Ewing was able to understand where these personality traits and these outlooks had come from. He was able to recognise that they were bleeding into so many different aspects of his life. Now, all of this, all of this therapy is not just about Mr. Ewing become more fulfilled and happier as a person, but it's actually about decreasing his risk of future offending in the long term after he's discharged from hospital because he might well have other future relationships. And services can monitor this, like probation services, for example, but they can't control it and they can't stop it. So crucially, by giving Mr. Ewing the tools to understand what the triggers were, this massively decreases his risk of doing this kind of similar offence in the future. So to give you some closure on this case, Mr. Ewing was gradually interacted more he engaged better in therapy, he became less paranoid, less withdrawn on the ward, and he generally became less suspicious of those around him. Over time, his behaviour on the ward improved, he was less argumentative, less aggressive, and eventually he was released from hospital. And after that, he was on long-term supervision by a consultant forensic psychiatrist in the community. So, dear viewers, before I finish, a quick question for you. Do any of these personality traits or experiences seem familiar to you? Have you yourself or any people that you know gone through something this kind of serious? Please share your stories and your thoughts in the comments sections below. I love having a chat with you, dear people. Hello, cruel world. What you just saw there was a tiny little tantalizing taste. Mm -hmm. Kind of nutty of a much longer episode. You should go check it out if you're interested. The link will be in the description below. If you're a fan of either true crime or mental illness <clears throat> or the crossover between the two, then you've got to go and check out my main YouTube channel, A Psych for Sore Minds. My name is Dr. Shaham Das. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist. I assess mentally disordered offenders for a living so that you don't have to. My channel covers a whole range, a smorgasbord of topics related to true crime and mental illness. For example, high profile true crime cases with my own kind of personal psychoanalysis of individuals. I discuss issues related to criminality. I discuss individual diagnoses. I give advice about psychiatric problems. I interview ex-patients. I do a lot. There is something for everybody on my channel and I implore you to go and check it out. You can even steal some of my ideas palm them off as your own to impress your friends and impress people at dinner parties. It's all good. I've got your back. Until next time, stay euthymic, check out my channel, and please do not forget, I love you.